Welcome to your Fit Story TV, the only platform that is focused on storytelling and personal branding for fit pros. Our mission is to provide fitness professionals that are trying to build and scale their business with valuable insights into how others have done it by sharing their fit story. Exactly. And today, we are honored to have Chris Dufay with us. Chris, how are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Dude, I'm very good to be sitting down with you two boys. I'm excited for this. Mate, we are too. Um, it's, it's, we've, I've been following you a little while. Perry's been following you for a, for a couple of years. And, um, mate, we're just pumped to get this, this episode out. Uh, I think that we, we kind of had a chat just before we started uh, and press record. And um, that I think this, this episode is just going to be highly valuable for some people out there that, that, that are listening, man. So um, thank you so much for joining us, bro. No, dude, I appreciate you having me. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I can uh, spit some gold here. <laughs> dude, it's, a, it's an open platform to be vulnerable and share your story. So um, you give us what you do. You give us what you want, you know? Um, so un- it's not like a, a normal kind of interview where at the beginning I'd probably say something like hey dude tell us a bit about yourself but if we did that like I say on most episodes <laughs> I'll blow my would, brains out <laughs> <laughs> it would probably just make the whole thing irrelevant so um what we'd love to start with man is actually kind of identifying the person you were before fitness became a thing for you so just like from your earliest memory just right up until fitness became something for you uh, I was always athletic as a kid. I always played sports. I was always half decent, but I was actually really overweight as a kid. And that's actually what held me back. Uh, I was like, I was good, but I definitely can see looking back that I didn't progress on to really pushing through to the highest levels um, of sporting because I was overweight. I was fat. Um, and that just came from poor eating habits. And that's something that's, I definitely had to get rid of over the time. So as I finished school, I started uh, to get into the gym. I joined a gym with a mate after we uh, kind of like just finished school and I started getting into training and I was obviously good at it because I've always been athletic, but I really like wanted to get into it and I wanted to uh, see the results and see what could happen. And that obviously only started after I kind of started and I could kind of sniff. I was like, hang on, like, there's some changes happening here and this is a good thing. And so after being overweight predominantly all my life, I figured out how to train, how to eat properly, half properly. And I saw the results and what spurred me to uh, become a personal trainer because I was a personal trainer at 18 was simply because um, I started to transform myself physically, but it was the inner transformation that really rocked me. It was, it was seeing me actually change of who I was and how I was showing up as a person that I thought was amazing. I was like, dude, if I could do this for myself, I would love to be able to do this for other people. And if I could earn between 70 to hundred dollars an hour doing this, then sign me up. I'm a personal trainer on the spot. So that's what got me into being a PT 14 years ago now that catalyst point for you you say you were kind of overweight and then kind of found yourself training but what was the specific catalyst for you what was the moment where you were like i'm gonna fucking change this i'm gonna i'm gonna change yeah so like it wasn't i was i wasn't just a little bit overweight i was fucking fat like do you know what I mean? like there's no need like you call it a spade a spade for the way it is and that obviously held me back for the way that i was perceiving myself it was the identity that I was carrying around with myself and so I when I left school I got a nine-to-five job managing a warehouse it was a pretty good job for like someone that was leaving school and it was a nine-to-five job and it didn't take me long to figure out that I was not cut out to have a nine-to-five it just wasn't for me and that was whilst I was training and there wasn't like a specific thing uh, straw that breaks the camel's back moment of like, oh, I'm going to do this. But it was like, no, I, I, I think I can do this. And it was that progressive, like, yeah, I think I can. I think I should. I know. Uh, fuck it. I've got to go for this right now. Do you know what I mean? And it was kind of like, okay. So then I left that job. I became a barman. So I could work at night um, and study to become a personal trainer during the day. I also became a cellarman at the same time because at the time I was the only dude that could actually carry the kegs. So I would rock up in the morning do all the cellarman work and put the kegs together um, underneath and then do the bar work and then go and study and become a personal trainer. And 
that was it was doing it was full on like it was mm. it was but it was it's clear and that's the thing like when you've got to eat glass you've got to eat glass and get the work done and it's okay you've got to work through it because there is a clear vision for what you're going to have to do and like i'm all for like lifestyle is a big part of why i do what i do and why i've built the business that i've built and the life that i've built so far but also like i woke up at um, just before four o'clock this morning because my brain was racing and I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to get up and do this work. Like, let's go. And I got up and by uh, 7 a.m. this morning, I had pr- already done my three most important tasks today. I had already meditated. Then I walked out, had a coffee, spent some time with my daughters and then took my wife because she's two weeks away from giving birth right now. And we went for a walk along the beach. It came back and I was like, oh shit. And then I had a call with my inner circle clients. And then I was like... I've, I've got like a second work day. I've already done everything. This is amazing. Getting back into it. So there are times where you've got to work and get hard, but coming back to the story of it was a progression. And that's the thing. Like, look, some people have said, wow, Chris, you're doing so well. And it's like, but I was like, yeah, look, it's taken time. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's taken a really long time. And there's never been one point where it's like, oh shit. And it's hockey sticked up. It's been progressive all the way through. And I love that I've come from the fitness world because that's what happens in fitness. You rock mm. up, you do every workout, every day, every meal, and you just back it up one after the after your dollar. And that's what you've got to do. Um, everyone that's looking for a silver bullet right now, being like, how do I, how do I grow a, like a seven multi seven figure business? Dude, you put the work in every single day. Do you know what I mean? And you do the right work and you keep working. And that's a part of the, the journey. A hundred percent, man. I'm so glad you said that too, because I think that there's a lot of people that will be able to relate to the place where you were at. So kind of like in a job, but at the same time, uh, you know, training to become a PT or training to become a coach. And um, based on your story, based on like the path that you've lived, what would the number one piece of advice be for someone who's at that place where you were, but now? Easy. Believe in yourself. No one else is going to believe in you. Don't expect anybody else to believe in you. You've got to believe in yourself because you're the one that's got to show up every single day. Whether it's your parents, your siblings, your wife, your husband, your best friend, don't expect them because that's not right of you to expect of them to have to back you up. You're going to have to back yourself up. And if you do that, then I know that you're on the right path. And this is where you've got to prove to yourself. So I'm a big believer that what you do on a day-to-day level cast votes for the identity that you see yourself in each and every day, right? You don't just suddenly become the person that you want to become. Like you've got to craft that person. And I'll be perfectly honest. I was having this discussion with my wife actually like last week. And I was thinking about um, the person that I was when I was living back in Sydney. And I can't actually relate back to that Chris. Like I, I, I can't relate back to that Chris. I really try and think back to who that person was. And I really struggle. And my wife was like, why? Like, why do you think that is? And I was like, because I've I've created who I am right now. I've decided on a day-to-day level and I've tried like piece by piece wanted to put this together. And it's through the people that you surround yourself with. It's by the people that you listen to, the podcast, the books, what you read. Like, it's so important. And for me, it was a big uh, pivot point was I was a personal trainer for eight years in Sydney. And I had worked through a bunch of big box gyms. It was great. I'd always wanted to try to do more. I had a team of personal trainers working for me. And I'd just gotten married to like the woman of my dreams. Uh, We were 24 by the time. I'd already bought property. Like business is doing well. But I was just fucking hating life because I saw this white picket fence life forming in front of me. And I was like, I'm going to have a mortgage. I'm going to be working in a job that I'm starting to lose passion for, to be perfectly honest, because I'm just grinding six days a week. And my wife had just fallen pregnant with our first child. And I was like, holy shit, what the hell's going on? Um, And then three days after uh, we found out that my wife was pregnant, um, I got an email from a mate that I'd kept bumping into in different courses all over the world. Um, And I had the opportunity to move to Dubai. I remember sitting there on my laptop and I turned around and my wife was in the living room next door and I'll go, Lauren, do you want to move to Dubai? (laughs) And she goes, yeah. And I was like, sweet. I wrote back to him. I was like, let's jump on a call. Let's chat. Um, My dad thought I was 
dead set jogging until the day that I got on the plane. Like they just wow. didn't think that it was actually happening, right? So I sold my house, I sold my car, I gave my clients away, I packed everything up. You talk about burning your ships, I burnt the entire fleet behind me. Um, I got on a plane to go to Dubai, I knew one person over on the other side. My wife was six months pregnant and I had three months to get a business up and running and then come back in time for my child's birth. Um, on that plane ride over there, it's like a 14 hour flight from Sydney to Dubai. I reckon about halfway, I just started crying, like just sat there crying and I was trying to not like blubber so I wouldn't disturb the woman next to me. I'm pretty sure she knew that I was just like moving <laughs> to my dog. And I just sat there and cried and I had to talk myself through it. And I had to be like, this is when you're going to step up right now, Chris, in life. And this is when you have a clear objective and you're going to have to do the work. Um, one, two, skip a few. It took me three weeks to get a full book of training of clients. Um, I was able to get the business up and running. I flew back earlier to surprise my wife. We gave... Uh, she gave birth to our daughter Arlo. Then we all moved over to Dubai. We lived there for a couple of years. I got uh, sick and tired of the personal training game and I was just completely burnt out. And then uh, we had a discussion that we didn't want to live in Dubai anymore. I wanted to start the online business because I was like, I I'm really interested in it. I think I'm good at it. And like, hell, I want to do it. And three weeks later, I gave all my clients away. We sold everything in Dubai. And we flew to Bali and um, that was a few years ago. And now I'm here in Bali running the business. So, wow. uh, so yeah, like go on Perry. I know you, I know I was, you want to say something. I was going to say, I, I can, <clears throat> I can relate to that when I had, I was working in person in the gym and I had quite a few clients in there and I, 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 I was fed up as well. I started to lose passion for in, in, um, inside the gym, which is why I wanted to move online. And then fast forward a few months, that's when I got a call to say that my dad had just died from a heart attack instantly. And I remember being, being in this situation, right, where I had left the gym, I had gone online, but I had a business that was completely failing because I had no fucking idea what to do. Because obviously it's a completely different game when you're online. And I was training every Tom, Dick and Harry. And I remember like, you know, you're on your plane, and, you know, so to speak, your back is against the wall, right? And my back was against the wall. And I was like, I have to, to make this work. Otherwise, I'm going to have to give up everything. And I know that on the other side, if I make this work, then I can help parents not go down the same road that my dad went down. And I created the Fit Parent Movement. Um, but the question I have for you is, when you was in that moment on, on, on the plane over to Dubai and you, know, you, you were crying, did you, because I asked myself the same question, did you have full belief that when you land in Dubai that you'd make it work? I had no doubt it was going to work. I knew it was okay. going to happen. And... You know, it's really weird. So like, so I got there for th and for three months, I had to get everything up and running. I slept on a mate's couch for three months, right? To make sure that I could like just get everything to happen. So I slept on a couch for three months and every single night. And so with the time zone difference from say like Dubai back to Australia, the only real time that I could be like messaging my wife was like straight before I went to bed. So it'd be like 9, 10 p.m. Dubai time that I'd be able to like, we'd have that window together and I'd be messaging her. And then I'd happily go to sleep every single night on that couch. I would close my eyes and just fall asleep like a baby, wake up. And it was probably because I was so fucking tired from the day to work that I did. <laughs> you know what? I remember looking back and I was like, I didn't, I was, I never once sat there and went, am I doing the right thing? Like, maybe should I go back? Like, fuck it. Should I like just call it quick? That never went through my head. And I don't know if it's because I'm a little bit weird, but I was just like, no, like this is what is going to happen. And I'm going to run through walls to make this happen. And it's also because like, look, there was a lot of pressure looking back onto me. It was like, I had a wife and a child coming for me to be able to perform right now. And you do what you got to do. Like mm -hmm. don't need to tread on eggshells about it and be a snowflake. You just do the work. Mm. Dude, like, I think that so many people think that people like yourself and, and people like us and, and, and so many other people out there just have it like it's one smooth ride, you know, to, to, to build the business and to like, it's almost like, and I think that that has happened because of the, there's so much marketing these days about like six figure blueprint, this, this, and, and it's like, yeah, it does work. I get it, but it takes fucking time and it takes a lot of effort and it takes sacrifice. Like you have to sacrifice things oh, in order to, yeah. Like, to, to so like I literally, 
it's a really good point, Matt, because like um, I literally had a sales meeting earlier today. Two of my sales guys were here. One was on a Zoom call. And one of the biggest things that is when people are coming on board that want to join our program, it's the, it's the reverse. It's us saying, do you understand this is going to be really hard work? Like we're going to lay it out for you right now. We're effectively spoon feeding you what works, but you've got to actually do the work. Like, do you actually understand that? And a lot of the time it's actually the, our sales guys jobs to say, You're, we don't think you can actually follow through. You're not a good fit because the thing is, this is going to be a working relationship right now. It's just like if someone rocks into the gym and says, yeah, you know what? I want to compete. I want to step on stage. I want to get shredded. And, but they're really just like, you just know they're not going to follow through with a diet. They're not putting the effort in. Like, it's just not going to happen. You'd be like, dude, like, to be honest, do you have what it takes to get to this um, end goal that you're really looking forward to? Like, God, the amount of bloody peanuts that we get that come on saying, oh, if I do a cycle of gear, then I'll get in really good shape and I'll get clients. And we're just like, dude, go somewhere else. This is not for you. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've got to provide value to the world. Like, your income is in direct proportion to the amount of value that you are bringing yeah. to the world. And if you don't get that, and if you aren't willing to see that this is a process and to see that you must get better every, every day, that you must actually be able to provide more value every day, then get a job doing something else because being an entrepreneur is not going to be a good fit for you. No, and it's fucking hard. Like uh, we're the first people to admit that, right? That entrepreneurship yeah. and building your own business is fucking hard. Like it takes graft. Like, uh, I've never turned up online and been like, oh, you know, like, it's all fucking rainbows and bunnies. Like, this is so, this, this is so easy. I've been completely transparent. Like, when I've struggled, I used to document it. When I struggled, I would document that. And that was actually a way of me to, especially when I was building my, my the clothing brand that I used to have, I documented that. Um, I documented the whole journey. Like, I documented the tough days and I documented some of the good days and that actually really helped with engagement at those points, you know? Um, but I think it's just such a key point that you bring up about just the hard work and the time. Cause I think there's so many fucking, you know, whether they're offline PTs or just transitioned online or, or, or whatever, like there's so many people out there that think that this game is easy. And although people like us can give them the blueprint and we can you know, provide them with the tools and the resources and the strategy and the support, it's still fucking work. Right. Like it's a good point you bring up, but like, like, let's be perfectly honest. A lot of people are comparing themselves, say, off Instagram, right? And it's all just like, wow, everyone's living such a great life. And I think there's going to be some serious studies coming out soon showing the actual, like, massive problems that are leading to, like, depression and so on that yeah. come from the comparison that happens on social media. Now, obviously, say, with us wanting to be authentic on social media and even the platform that we're doing right now, really wanting to talk about the, the truths of what's going on, I still don't think it's good because I feel like for someone to be like, what's really going on, surround yourself with the people that are actually doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like I was in, um, I was in a mastermind, not that it was a few weeks ago and it's a seven and eight figure entrepreneurs in this mastermind. And we just sat there and you know what the biggest things that came up? I'm feeling fucking lonely. I'm really depressed. My, I'm struggling to being able to um, juggle everything like with my family. Do you know what I mean? Like I've got no friends. Like these are the real things that are coming up. I also remember, you know, I remember being in, uh, it was a while ago. I spoke at James Schramko's um, Super Pups business event a few years ago and I got to sit in with his silver circle. James Schramko is awesome. He's like, he's like one of the dudes that I say really helped me get online at the start, right? And so I was just like totally starstruck when I first got there. I was like, just started. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm here. <laughs> Um, moment. <laughs> this exercise where everyone walked up, everyone got a post-it note, right? And everyone walked up to the wall and said like, what are they struggling with? The extremely vast majority of people, it came down to feeling guilty that they're not with their family when they're working, but then when they're working, they're feeling guilty that they're not with their family. And it's just a vicious cycle. Do you know what I mean? So that's just one example. And say for any mums and dads that are with us right now listening, I'm sure that's something that you're going to be feeling as well. Do you know what I mean? And especially for me, like having my family, having like um, my daughters be a part of this, they're actually with their grandparents right now. Usually they're jumping all around me. Like I want to see them in part when I'm running team meetings, they come and sit down with me. Do you know what I mean? So the, actually the ability to see what's going on and the ability to understand 
the actual journey of being an entrepreneur, extremely important. Because if you're always looking at some toss pot in a Lamborghini or jumping on a private jet and just like, go away. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm living a real life here. Mm. It's like we were talking about before perception and identity, right? Mm. People perceive people to be in all these different places doing all these amazing things. And, and, and the reality is sometimes fucking vastly different. So, dude, I'm actually really interested to, uh, to drag it to this point in your life where you were transitioning to an online coach from offline to making the transition to online. What, did that, what was that like for you, that initial transition? Because for a lot of uh, people that are transitioning online, there's a lot of different feelings and emotions and a lot of different perceptions, actually, and a lot of different misconceptions and all that so what was it what was it like for you taking that jump from being an online where business was actually fucking working right so there, yeah. there wasn't yeah yeah like it's not so like, like that's business the thing. Wasn't i was a personal trainer in dubai i had a full book of clients i was charging a premium i had trainers working for me but still i was in what i call the time for money trap do you know what i mean so any time that i wanted to travel any time that i was like touch wood sick anytime that I wanted to spend with my family or just do something else, I was losing money because I wasn't in this face-to-face onesie twosie interaction with my client, which is a problem. It's a bad business model. Right. And that's where like, I feel like especially personal trainers and coaches are getting fed a lie when they first come into it because it's like, it's so good. You be your own boss. You choose your own hours. And it's like, hang on, you you're talking one side of the coin right here. You're not painting the true picture of what actually is the life that you are going to live. Do you know what I mean? You're going to be eating out of Tupperware containers in a locker room, stuffing your face in between clients, waking up at 4.30, getting home at 7 p.m. Do you know what I mean? With split shifts, both sides, six days a week. Like, let's talk the real truths of how it can actually pan out for you. Um, so for me, it was like, I, I need to make a change because I want to be a better human being in all and the 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 straw that did break the camel's back was i remember i had a full day of clients i remember i was the usual 4 30 a.m wake up um jumped in my car got to the gym just before six o'clock for my 6 a.m client i remember that client cancelled last minute as well so i sat there at 6 a.m i mean scratching my nuts being like okay i gotta wait for the next client (laughs) um had a full day of training and consulting clients finished at 6 p.m jumped in the car race back um we're living on the palm palm jumeirah in dubai race back to get back to give my daughter the bottle to put her to bed because the time that i was actually being able to spend with her was to give her the bottle and put her to bed every night i got home and she was already asleep and it just broke me and i was just like I'm not being the father that I want to be. I'm not being the husband I want to be. And I sat there in my kitchen crying to my wife. And I'm just like, I feel completely emasculated right now because I'm failing at being the provider. And that's my job as a man. Do you know what I mean? Like for me, I was like, I feel like I need to be the provider in this current chapter of my life right now. This is what I need to be doing. And I'm doing a really shit job. And when I think about it, it's because I'm in a really shit model of what I'm actually doing right now. And that's when it came down to like, look, something has to, something has to change. Like something has to break and something has to get moving forwards. And so I'd always kind of been thinking about the online thing and I was kind of dabbling with it. And I was like, oh, I've got to actually start doing something about it. And so for me, I, um, James Franco was one person. I just like devoured heaps, heaps of his resources. I remember I was actually, um, I was prepping for my first physique show and in the every morning doing my fucking cardio, I was listening to podcasts at the time and I was just devouring as much marketing material as I possibly can. I figured out how to actually uh, put together like a sales page and start writing sales copy. And I put together, I spent ages in putting together a, uh, like a program it was a 12 week program I was going to sell. And I had the PayPal button set up. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be rich. Everything's going to be rolling through. And like, I remember uh, reading an article about Mike Geary on Tim Ferriss's podcast. And he did like 36, was it was it? It was like, it was like uh, eight figures, right? Let's, let's call it $12 million in selling an ebook. And I was like, dude, I'm in like, this is exactly what I'm calling for. I worked months on this thing and then I got ready to launch and I launched it and I was like, money, this is going to be great. I sold nothing. 
another zero, zero, wow. one. Like, and I was like, something wrong? PayPal's broken. What's going on? <laughs> Money should be rolling in right now. Like, I'm, I'm getting ready to, do you mean, buy my Aston Martin. Like, <laughs> no, it didn't work like that. Um, my second attempt, came, I learned, um, and I remember we were actually driving in, at the time on the actual app. Uh, when you had a payment come through, it made a noise. And I remember driving um, and like I hit the send button t- for the emails. And then like we went downstairs, got in the car, started driving and the app s- started dinging. And I was like, oh shit, like I'm getting paid. I remember driving, getting and like ding, paid, ding, paid. I was like, fuck. And that's when I realized, and, and too, don't get me wrong, I probably made a couple hundred bucks, right? Like, it's, it's calmed down. It's not like I was making millions then. Um, but it was the realization that I could make money not being in the gym for me. So being, being a personal trainer, do you know what I mean? I had the, the identity of I had to be in the gym with my client right there um, to be able to make money. And I didn't have to when I realized that. And I was like, oh shit. So that gave me the spur. That was like, okay, I can do this. Mm. Like, let's get going. Do you know what I mean? And it was like Mm. nothing at the time. Um, Then when we figured out that like, look, we have to leave Dubai. Like we need to do something. Where is it that we want to go? I want to do this online thing. I started go, right, I'm going to do um, one-on-one high-end online coaching. Like I was was more of a physique coach back then. That was what I was really interested in. And so I remember I gathered – um, a bunch of my face-to-face clients, I said to them, like, hey, look, I'm leaving. Um, if you want to come and train with me online, this is the whole setup. And I was able to on-sell them into my online program. Some of them just needed to be in the face-to-face world. So that was cool. There was other people that were on my list and on my following that I was able to sell a couple on board. And I was like, hey, look, I'm making, I'm making some money now. I think it was like, I want to say like six grand a month, maybe at the moment that I would have had with like online coaching. And then we moved to Bali here. And I remember in the first week, I probably lost like a third of my clients straight up, right? Because I made a massive mistake. The clients that I took from my face-to-face world, they just weren't a right fit for online coaching. Like they needed someone there counting their reps, walking them through it. Do you know what I mean? Doing that thing, which is perfectly fine, but they just weren't a right fit. And it would have been a combination that I was just really shit at actually running an online business at the time as well. Like, let's not pass that fact. And so I remember like moving countries and then now the online business that was supporting myself and my family, I just lost a third of the income, like felt like that. And I was like, oh shit. So like, I was like, it was like this massive high, then there was this massive low straight away. And then I just kind of like built on from there. So for me, the transition was a, was a roller coaster of a ride and there's lots of emotions going which way and every way, but that's a part of it. You're going to, there's wins and losses. You're going to get bruised, but as long as you keep getting back up, um, I got actually asked on a podcast recently that I got interviewed on and they're like, what's your superpower, Chris? And I went, um, I think it's that I just keep going and I keep pivoting. Like I'm always constantly trying to reiterate. I'm always constantly trying to get better. We're always trying to see like, where's the fix? What needs to happen? And from that constant progression, you get that little bit better throughout that process. So I think that's something that's just super key for everyone listening right now. So I could give them a little bit of a, do you know what I mean? A tap on the shoulder and say, you know what? You can do this. You just mm. got to keep at it. Just keep going, you know. Something that you that you just said a second ago was interesting about the the mindset that you were in as you transitioned from offline to online. Um, now, the reason why I think this is just an important thing to just touch on real quick is that a lot of on offline trainers they may be charging I don't know, let's say depending on where they are between twenty, thirty bucks, fifty bucks, maybe even sixty, right? Ranges, but it's relatively low ticket in comparison to what you can earn online as an online coach with high ticket sales. So for you, how did you know that you were going, like, did you start just charging more money when you transitioned online or did you kind of like, cause a lot, I see it a lot and you probably do too, right? I'm going online. What am I charging? 50 pound a month, 70 pound a month, a hundred pound a month. I'm stopping there. Cause I can't possibly charge anymore. Cause my mindset is in the face to face thing, which is I trade one hour of my time and my expertise for this, for this 60 pound or the 70 pound. So what was that like for you making that transition and the, and the money mindset elevation that you, that you went through? So 
let me weave this in so my experience actually has something practical for the listener right now for them to be able to get better from is the process of this is it's a different business model. So number one, realize there's a different business model. You're not going from face-to-face coaching. Now I do the exact same fucking shit, but it's just kind of like I have a computer in front of me, right? <laughs> it's, it's different. So the biggest thing that I actually see coaches get wrong from the very get-go is that they're actually in the wrong business model and they're working so hard on a day-to-day level and they're actually kind of building their ladder of success, but they're building up at the wrong wall right? Because they're going to get capped and they're going to get capped in multiple different areas. So usually it's the time investment, it's the money investment, and it's the energy investment that usually go wrong with those sort of processes as well. Um, The other thing is, and this is what I do with clients that come through, I would say like, Matt, how much money do you want to make? Like just for shits and giggles, just play with me. How much money do you want to make, Matt? 2K a month. Cool, 2K a month. Why isn't it 4K a month, Matt? Uh, well, 2K is kind of like what I, think I, what I think I could charge, get away with. Cool. So you just put a fictitious number in front of you as a ceiling for how much money you can make. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is what everybody does. So everybody comes to me, there's, I ask them, okay, cool, let's start with the money thing right now. How much money do you want to make? Okay, I'll just double it straight away and I'll say, why not? of people are going to say something like what you just said, Matt, and I appreciate the honesty because that's what's really going to be coming back. And it's like, great, you just put a lip, like you just put that ceiling there. I didn't say it, Jeremy, Perry didn't say it. You're the one that said it, right? Mm. And so there's two reasons. One, understand that your mindset right now is capped at that level. Number two, let's say for example, you go, okay, okay, all right. You called my bluff. It's not 2K a month. I want uh, 250K a year. Awesome, you want 250K a year. Now let's talk practically about the business model that will earn you 250K a year, right? And because at the end of the day, especially when it comes to sales, for example, like if you say you're charging, um, okay, let's say you're going to charge 50 quid a month for coaching, cool? Now, what's the real difference between charging 50 quid a month and charging 1,000 quid? Now, obviously, there's a level of expertise and quality and coaching and stuff like that. But then as well, there's the belief in yourself. So yeah. there's what's the market going to pay for what I'm offering? And there's what am I actually thinking that I'm worth at the end of the day? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where um, a lot of the time when people say like, yo, Chris, like how much should I charge when it comes to online coaching? And again, this is the process that I've had to go through to now be able to give you this answer. It is you need to, number one, what comes out of your mouth without you like coughing on it on the way out? Do you know what I mean? Because if you say, oh, Chris, how much do you charge? And if I'm like, oh, it's $30,000, you're going to call my bluff and you'd be like, oh, it's fucking not. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, I can clearly can bargain on you on that. Now, if you are understanding of how much the market can pay and your understanding of the value that you're actually giving, and you actually believe in yourself, I would say you're in a pretty good shot for knowing how much you can charge for your actual coaching at the end of the day. Um, So when it comes to me, I started off really low, right? And then I added a little bit more. Mm. I feel confident in this, I'm getting better. Now I wanna be able to, I'm like upskilling myself. So now I'm a better coach. Now I can charge a little bit more. And then that process continues, continues, continues. Do you know what I mean? The other thing that I don't like is I don't like a coach coming along and being like, oh, that dude's charging a thousand quid a month. I'm going to charge a thousand quid a month. And I'm going to be like, it's not the same. Do you know what I mean? Because you're <laughs> delivering completely different amounts of value and you're not as good as that person. Right. Yeah. So there is a discrepancy when it comes to that. Does that answer the yeah. question? Uh, mate, definitely like laddering, yeah. basically laddering your price as confidence builds. And that was, uh, that's actually some of the advice that I give to, to our clients too. Like some of them come to me and, uh, and Perry and they'll say stuff like, uh, you know, like I, I'd, I'd like to be earning, and it's usually around the whatever replaces a typical salary of a job, like one and a half to two K or maybe 2.5 K per month. It's just like where people's head is at, like you said, the mindset. And yeah. the advice that, that I always give to people is look, ladder your prices. So instead of going from a hundred pound a month to a thousand pound for your program, just ladder it. You know, just ladder it. And as you build confidence in the sales process and, and you get better with marketing, you get better with your copy. And as you just develop and get better, which happens over time, then you reach the point of where you want to get to. You'll reach the free month, the 3K months, the 5K months, the 10K months. That's going to happen for you. 
but it's it's you know like dude starting off as someone who's like i'm here at 1000 and i want to get the 10000 10 10k months that's fine to want that and to desire that and to and to to, to want to work towards it but i 100% agree with what you said just ladder your ladder the price as you build your confidence so do you want to go deeper into pricing fuck yeah yeah okay let's do something this will take a couple of minutes okay so um the, one of the easiest ways I explain to coaches is for them to understand pricing at the end of the day and what's involved with pricing, okay? Think of a seesaw, right? Think of a seesaw when you're as a kid, right? So on one side of the seesaw, you've got your lead, your prospect, somebody that could potentially buy from you, right? And what they've got is they have their um, untrustworthiness with you right? And on the other side of the seesaw, you have your selling ability and your offer, right? So it's got to weigh each other out. So what happens is, let's say you've got a, you're charging a $20 fitness product right now, Matt, okay? And me to charge a $20 offer, how much of an actual value and selling ability do I need to overcome your price resistance? Not much, right? I could probably do it with a Facebook live stream, Let's say, for example, so my selling ability on this side is pretty low. Cool. Let's say I'm selling a $200 product right now, okay? So your um, price resistance is going to be stronger because we're, we're at a higher price. My sales ability and what my offer is, I've got to give more to sell a $200 product and I've got to be better at my sales ability to be able to sell that $200 product to match the seesaw of the price objection. Cool? Cool. $2,000 fitness program right now, okay? You're gonna have a really strong price resistance on this side of the seesaw. And for me to be able to sell that, I've got to give you more so my offer goes up and I've got to be able to sell better. So maybe I've got a sales video, a webinar, there's an email series, like fancy internet marketing mumbo jumbo shit, right? To sell a $2,000 product. Okay, so you understand that we've got a difference between the two. All right, cool. So let's. Think of it, a $20,000 fitness program, okay, $20,000. Is there high price resistance for somebody to spend $20,000 on a fitness program? Yes or no? Fucking A. Yes, fucking A. Mm -hmm. There is a lot yeah. of price resistance for a 20 grand program, okay? For me to sell a $20,000 program, let's think of your local and average CrossFit trainer right now, okay? How much does he have to give to sell a $20,000 program? Dude, he's got to give everything in the kitchen sink to be able to sell a $20,000 program. <laughs> There's one-on-one -on -one calls every single day. He's giving you a back scratch. He's patting your hair to go to sleep. He's, giving, he's cooking your food. He's doing the whole thing, right? How's he going to sell it? He's got everything. There's Facebook ads. There's webinars. There's email series. There's one-on-one -on -one calls. Like there's, there's a face consultation that has to happen, do you know what I mean? Everything has to happen on a price ability, okay? That's the CrossFit trainer. Now, think of it. I can see to the, your left ear, Perry, Total Recall by Schwarzenegger, the book, right? Yep, yep. Right there. Okay. What does Schwarzenegger have to do to sell a $20,000 fitness program? Not much. It's probably a, hey, come around, let's have a workout together at Gold, and he does it through one tweet, right? So his offer has gone way down, and his sales ability needs to be right at the bottom. What happens at a seesaw? It's the fulcrum. The fulcrum is what determines how much you need on what side for how heavy it is, okay? So the CrossFit trainer needs it all the way over to one side and Arnie needs it all the way over to the other side. So it's the context of where you're coming from that actually determines how much you can charge and how you're actually going to sell it at the end of the day. So you just need to think of yourself, Am I the local average CrossFit trainer or am I Schwarzenegger, right? The more that you can increase your context in the marketplace, the easier it is it becomes for you to sell and the easier it is for you to sell at a higher price. Does that make sense? Boom. Love right. that, man. That's how you have pricing. Absolutely love that, man. And um, I was actually speaking to somebody yesterday. This, 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 this guy has been messaging me back and forth. And um, he says that, you know, he was like, oh, I don't really know you know what to charge 
This is what he said. He said, I don't really know what to charge. I know I want to charge, you know, relatively high, but I don't really know what to charge. And I said, well, what, what do you feel confident in charging? He said, well, I don't know. I could probably sell my program for £800, right? And I basically brought it back to asking him one simple question, which is completely in context to what you just said. I said, what's your level of online authority right now? What's the level of authority that your brand has? And he said, well, how do I know that? I said, well, look at the levels of engagement that you get. Look at the levels of, uh, look at the amount of when you post, how many people, like the social proofing that builds up. Like you've got to look at your level of authority and then leverage that against what you think you can charge. Because there's people out there that say, fuck it, I'm going to charge a thousand pounds for this coaching program. Well, do you know what? If your level of authority online is your personal brand, is low you ain't that's no way it's going to happen for you it's just not and it takes time to build authority just like what you said arnold has taken time to build his authority he's been in the game for fucking years you know he's won the most prestigious bodybuilding titles on the planet and that's why he'd get away with it terminated he can charge whatever the fuck he wants exactly yeah yeah. (laughs) and if he did if if you don't buy it he'll just fucking fuck you up Yeah, like so to take that one step further as well from what you said, the level of authority, absolutely. But it's the level of authority to that person that you're talking to. And this is where I think most coaches actually go wrong is they're trying to gauge themselves on the marketplace as in a big wide hole. And they're not trying to think of like be the specific. Like a lot of the time you shouldn't try to play against the influencers you should play a different ball game, right? It's the whole like blue ocean, red ocean scenario. Like if you're not at that level and you don't have that level of, um, I hate the word, influence, right? Then you need to play a different ball game. And this is where I actually think, say like good personal trainers, good coaches actually have the upper hand because you can have more authority with your specific market, with the specific person that you can attract and that you can have talking to for you to be able to sell that thousand dollar program. Do you know what I mean? But it doesn't mean that you can sell that thousand dollar program by jumping on Instagram and taking a selfie of your six pack. Like that's just not, not going to work. Used to. Sometimes. (laughs) It doesn't anymore. (laughs) That's a good point. The shit that used to work five years ago, and we still get this, the shit that used to work five years ago doesn't work anymore. It's a different ball game. Mm, completely man it's a it's a different ball game entirely so i'm interested man like you you reach this point where you kind of uh, we're gonna wrap it back to your story um we just delivered some by the way we just delivered some incredible Buyer. fucking value fucking <laughs> that was yeah, yeah. Like ridiculous value um sorry, so I completely took that off a tangent that was not nothing to do with <laughs> dude Fuck but up, sorry. but but you know what like it it was it it was it was gold mate uh and people yeah. that are listening they're definitely going to be able to take that 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 information that advice and, and run with it so mate that was epic um but re- kind of like wrapping it back to your story you we all kind of got into the coaching game as a as a business mentor at some point like what was the shift for you when did you realize that you were kind of doing really well for your business you were doing really fucking well in your business but what was the change what was the specific change for you? Where, where was that moment where you were like, okay, cool. I'm done with doing this now. I'm going to start actually helping other people build their PT business. Why, why was that so important to you to do that? Um, that's a great question. When after a little while after I had moved to Bali, I just had a lot of trainers being like, yo, I saw you, you were PT in Sydney. Then you were PT in Dubai and they're in Bali. Like, how'd you do that? Um, and it was just like, I, I had these trainers contacting me. Like it started off with like friends and just like my actual like network. Um, and I was just helping out these trainers. Like, Hey, they're like, this is what I've done. Try this out. How do you do this? And then it went from like one-on-one kind of people, me helping. Then it kind of turned into like, Oh, look, I'll put a group of you dudes together and let me see what we can do. I did that. And that worked really well. And I was like, Oh shit. Like, this is pretty good. Um, so the truthful answer is it just happened organically and it just grew and it grew and it grew and then slowly turned into a business where I was like, well, this is taking a lot of my time now. I should charge for this. Um, and as I was doing that, my actual passion for business just surpassed my passion for fitness. And I was like, you know what? So I would say to you, to Matt and Perry, my 
biggest failing as an entrepreneur thus far, one of them, because there are many, would be that I held on to the identity of being a personal trainer for too long. Um, I'm not a personal trainer anymore. Um, and I really held on to it for a really long time. I really held on to my fitness business actually for a really long time as well. And it was simply because I had the identity that I was a personal trainer and where really my passion is I love marketing. I love sales. I love business building. I love the psychology that comes behind it. Like I am reading and listening and just, I can't get enough of the stuff and I spend stupid amounts of money on going to different masterminds and courses. And it's just, it, I, it really jazzes me up. Um, and I stopped listening to like doing fitness podcasts. I stopped listening and I stopped reading that stuff. And I, I just fell off the bandwagon. Like, obviously I think health and fitness is still very important. I, I love to train. Like I still want to kind of keep the finger on the pulse with it. But I then saw myself as, you know what? I want to become one of the world's best when it comes to building businesses um, and that's what's where my passion flipped. And it just took me a really long time to do that, to be perfectly honest. Um, so if I can turn this into actually some like practical help for everyone listening, be conscious of what you're actually into, be conscious of what are you actually doing and be conscious of where you actually want to go so that you can craft the identity to match where you want to be able to go. Um, that's one of the best things that you could possibly do because I held on to the identity of being a personal trainer for way too long. Mm, mate hannah cham was on a, an episode recently and um she said the same thing she said that you know at one point when she started to really dive into business building there was this shift and she actually still had clients on at the time she was still doing health and fitness coaching and she just knew that it wasn't it wasn't right to be doing that when she had this overwhelming passion for business developing and the passion for training clients started to just fade um, and I think that's happened for a lot of people, man. So another thing that I think is truly important is coming back to the concept of the one thing. And for me, when I did give up the fitness business and I actually gave it to, uh, it was actually a client. I gave it to a client and go, look, dude, we'll just do a rev share deal. Um, and you, know, you can have all the assets. Like I, I gave them the Hail Mary of Hail Marys. You know what I mean? I was like, just have it all go for it they had everything um business fucking rocketed it just exploded because my entire passion and energy and focus went to the wards of one thing and i was able to truly actually build something so i continue to come back to um focus on that one thing and put everything into that and if you do find yourself going into something else if you do find yourself enjoying gardening more, then become a gardener. Do you know what I mean? And just garden the absolute shit out of it. Be the best. Like, just do it that way. Don't, don't hold on to the identity. And it comes back to, what's your story? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, I, I loved when you actually reached out and you said like, yo, this is what we're doing about stories. And I had to say like, in my Audible account right now, I was like, you know what I've just listened to? One book, Save the Cat. It's actually about how to write screenplays. Um, next one, mm. the hero's two journeys. The next one, the hero with a thousand faces. The next one, creating character arcs. The psychedelic explorers, guys. <laughs> this is the next one after that. <laughs> so it's like there's going into like like learning stories and the actual craft of storytelling is so key, and that's a part of how you live your life at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, I 100%. fucking love that. So especially um, the save the cat one because I'm uh, I'm an actor and I read a lot of scripts. Um, a lot of scripts, half of the shelf is all scripts behind me. And I think if you can just understand from a writer's point of view, because here's the thing with, with stories, we're the author of our own story. We're writing our own story and we have that power to shift and rewrite our story if, if need be. And so when it comes to scripts, um, I think that's really, really powerful um, for, for all the listeners, definitely. A really good book by Todd Herman, really, really good guy, The Alter Ego Effect. I highly recommend this book. This book blew my mind and it was perfect timing for me. Todd Herman is an absolute genius of a human being. That's another book that goes into it because that talks about how you write the story about yourself and how you can step into an alter ego for the situations that you need to step into it, which was just perfect to me. So I highly recommend The Alter Ego Effect when it comes to something like that as well that you're talking about, Perry. Yeah. Um, it's 
I think it's one of the most important things that we could do in our lives, to be perfectly honest. Mm. Like, let's just, let's put the fitness business shit aside just for the moment because like, yeah. that's cool, but like, it's not the be all and end all. Let's talk about how you rock up into life every single day and how you want to be. And that is how you write your story is one of the most important things. Like, so for me, um, I'm shooting a documentary at the moment, right? Cool. She said to me nine months ago, yo, Chris, you're going to shoot a documentary. I would be like, you're full of shit. Like <laughs> that doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, at the start of the year, I thought I'd run a bit of an experiment and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm not going to write goals down. Fuck goals. And I was like, I read another really good book. How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by uh, okay. Scott Adams, the guy that, really good book. Uh, he says it in this book, goals are for losers, systems are for winners. And I was like, I totally get that. That resonates mm. with me right now. So mm. at the start of the year, I'm like, I'm not writing goals down. And all I wrote down was um, I am. And I said, I'm a filmmaker. I am an artist. Um, I am a CEO of a eight figure business. I am, I, I wrote a bunch of I am's right. And I'm like, I'm just going to live my life as that person. And I'm not going to be like, this is the exact thing. And, and uh, you know what? It's been fucking brilliant. It's been so good, especially for me, like actually shooting a documentary and writing and writing like a fucking script. And I was like, how the fuck do I write a script? And I had to go out and learn how to write a script and, how do I start interviewing people and how do I get some really big names on it? And how do I get a film crew and how do we shoot it properly? And how does the editing have to go to be? And what about publishing and distribution and all that kind of shit? I had to step into somebody else. I was not a personal trainer anymore. I was now a mm. filmmaker and I was like, holy shit. And then I found myself um, like one brilliant moment was, do you guys know who Chris Bell is? The guy that created uh, bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Bell, amazing yeah, Chris human Bell. being. Um, awesome dude. I suddenly found myself sitting down in LA having lunch with him and he's like being a mentor to me, telling me like how to create films and everything. And I'm just like, life is fucking amazing. I don't know how I've gotten myself here. Do you know what it's I mean? Incredible. Like, this is so cool right now. And it just comes down to the power of actually changing your identity and doing something that aligns with the person that you see yourself with. I know we've taken a head snapping turn from where we started this conversation when it comes to this. But it's really important for somebody to decide. Like if you are the identity of I am a successful online coach, well then fucking live into it. Like lean into it and continue to move through mm -hmm. it. But also be aware of where else you want to go as well. Completely. I, can I quick cover something there? I think one, everything you just said is absolutely bloody fascinating. Um, I really do. Um, what, what I'm really fascinated by is, especially in fitness, you know, we're told to live by goals in fitness, right? And then when we go into business, we're told to live by goals. And like in drilled into my head is goals, 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 wake up, write your goals down. Before you go to bed, write your goals down, memorize them. And I just think it's absolutely fascinating how you're like, fuck that, I'm going to do the complete opposite. Um, what, what was your quick story behind goals? And did you find that they didn't work for you? Or what was your issue with them? Not necessarily the goals didn't work for me. Let me tell you a story. I was sitting down. We moved back to Australia for a few months. We went to Noosa for a few months at the end of last year. Um, and I reconnected with a guy that I used to be in a mastermind with. And he's awesome. Um, how do I describe? He's kind of like a Yoda to me. Like he's, <laughs> some people would think he's like super woo woo. Like we're talking psychedelics. Like I'll talk mushrooms or ayahuasca and stuff like that. I've got no qualms about it. Do you know what I mean? And we we're sitting down and we we're having uh, lunch one day and we we're talking about identities and we we're talking about doing, how do you actually see yourself and how do you rock up? He said something to me really profound. He goes, what, do you, what sort of pressure do you think you put on yourself calling yourself an entrepreneur? And I was like, well, like you've got to perform, like you've got to build a business, like you've got to make money, you've got to get the team going, you've got to like, blah, 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 you've got to do all this shit. He goes, what sort of pressure do you think an artist sees upon themselves? And I was like, none. An artist rocks up and does their creative work and some people think it's shit and some people love it and it's all completely subjective, do you know what I mean? And the artist does its work. He goes, yeah, I see myself like an artist. And I was like, dude, I got goosebumps saying that. I was just like, talk about mind fuck. I was just like, oh shit. Like 
that's right. amazing. Like just, just by calling yourself something different, do you know what I mean? Was like a complete mindset shift into how you're going to actually perceive life, how you perceive what you do, how you perceive the pressures, how you perceive everything at the end of the day. Like life is perception. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So that got me thinking, well, okay, how am I seeing myself? And I had to sit down and meditated on it, journaled about it. And that's where I came to the fact of like, all right, I'm going like the two most do you mean, um, powerful words in the English language, I am. I was like, all right, I'm going to write down. I'll be like, what am I? And I, I wrote down, do you mean, I am this, I am this, I am this. Um, so in my journal, the thing that I read every morning and I write in, I've just got a list of I am. So I look at every day before I get the day going. Um, and it's nice. Like, is it, a, is it complete success? Am I going to come back to goals? I'm like, I'll probably mesh them back in in a way, but then also coming back into it. And what I like about what Scott Adams says in this book is goals are for losers, systems are for winners. So it mm. just comes down to what's your system? Like, what are you actually doing on a day-to-day -day level? And a part of that system means what are you doing and how are you showing up? How you show up determines how you see yourself and how you see yourself is the story that you tell yourself. Exactly. And that's the story is how other people know you. That's how other people identify you, right? Which is just fucking, yeah, mate. I'm so glad that we did venture down this route of talking about this because this is the thing. It's like the beautiful thing about your fit story TV is that it's not, it's not just like those, those basic questions with one kind of specific outcome. This is what's beautiful is that we're able to just take different kind of different paths during this, this, this conversation. And it's going to be even more valuable because it's so it's such a broad spectrum of perspective for people, you know? So mate, can I say one, one more thing Matt? is let's say you started this interview and you go, yo, Chris, how do we get more leads? I want more leads, right? A big problem that most people, most business owners, let's just class it all business owners. Where most business go wrong is they're answering a symptom and they're not answering a problem, right? And this is the difference. Why, th this is the actual concept that I'm shooting this documentary off. Why do two people get given the same diet, the same training program, and one person doesn't change, maybe even gets in worse shape, and the other person gets in great shape? right? There's one scenario. Second scenario, why can two people get the same business building program, same sales funnel, the same copywriting, the same Facebook ad shit, all that kind of stuff. One person do you mean, flops and the other person makes millions. It's all because of how that person has actually showed up at the end of the day. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's where if we work on this now, the stuff that actually cares, you can use those other tactics later really easily. But the biggest problem is people aren't showing up the right way and they're actually working on their symptoms, not their core problems. Because you'll craft a problem, sorry, you'll craft a solution to try and solve the I need more leads, but it's not the more leads problem that you actually have. There's something deeper that's actually causing you not to have leads and that's the problem that you have to get to. Straight fucking fire, dude. Like, I am mind blown. Like, you know, like how, like in the fitness industry, when, and um, actually, Chris, you say you go to a lot of masterminds. So I went to a mastermind um, last year and it was a five day mastermind. And when you're at a mastermind, you get dished out a lot of, a lot of information, a lot of content. But sometimes, I don't know what your experience, but especially when I was there, there was just one thing that that guy said. There was one thing that that guy said. It was like, it triggered. I'm like, wow holy shit i've been here for a while i've learned some really cool stuff is that one thing you just said there dude that's really going to change the course for me continue forward um and i just got that from this so i, <laughs> I appreciate that especially when it comes out if it's masterminds books interviews yeah, podcasts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, do you know what i mean everyone's trying to take the, and i used to be that person like fuck don't don't get me wrong i used to be that person that would write everything possible everything 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 possible um so there's two things I'd love to dish out to help with someone. Number one, if you are taking notes, if you are trying to consume information, for example, um, get the piece of paper that you're writing it on and, can, and put it in, draw a line down the middle and put it into two parts. You're going to write the actual, say, like bullet point for whatever it is that you just took on. Be like, oh, sales funnel shit, right? On left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you're going to write down how are you actually going to apply it from now? 
What are you actually going to do about it, right? So then you actually have a list of how do I actually do the shit that I have rather than a bunch of theoretical crap at the end of the day. The second thing is the good shit sticks, right? So don't try and take everything down because it's really only the couple of things that you really need to take away. Like a perfect example of this was um, I was in, I was in a mastermind, maybe it was like, I want to say less than two months ago. Um, it was amazing. So we're sitting there, everyone's like a seven to eight figure entrepreneur. Uh, this one guy comes in, he's doing 5 million a month and he just broke down. He's like, this is exactly how I'm doing 5 million a month. Like this guy's doing 60 million a year, right? And he just breaks it down and shows us like how it works. And I'm just like, oh, this is amazing. Um, and then we get up and then we all have to do this talk and I'm doing a talk and then you get grilled by everyone. Like, it's really good. Like everyone's like, why didn't you get this number? And why are you doing that? And it's really good to be able to actually have accountability. One guy sitting down was like, oh, have you thought about like this, this? And then this other guy next to him goes, yeah, and have you thought about this? There was three points, right? Three points. And I was like, oh, that's really fucking smart. I'll write that down. Um, as I was flying home, I remember reading those three things and go, fuck, that's, that, that's actually really smart. Like, I think I really need to apply about that. Um, that was the first things that we applied as a team when I got back and I, I'm going to say numbers and I'm, I don't say it to impress. I just say it to like express to you what's possible when you actually do the shit that works and stop trying to do a hundred million different things. Um, we did $140,000 of sales in one day. And in that week we did $340,000 of sales just in that one week. And that was like, holy shit, this stuff clearly works. I cannot believe how have I gotten this far without knowing just those three little things. Like it wasn't even like gigantic, but it was applying them properly. Do you know what I mean? So when you say, Perry, that you go into a mastermind and someone drops a bomb and there's one thing and that's what you're going to walk away with, that is worth gold. And that's worth everything right there. Like people don't need mm. to think that they need to walk away with like a book full of notes full of stuff one bullet point that can fit on a post-it note can make you millions and that's the simple fact of it if you apply it properly mm. implementation right i think it's uh, probably because when we were all in fucking school we had to write down notes and we wrote everything <laughs> we would write so, everything down <laughs> matt that's a really good point because where like where have we all come from right we've all come from the fitness industry where, where does the fitness industry really grind work harder Diet harder, more reps, more sets, more cardio. Do you know what I mean? Cut your calories even more. It's more, 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 more the whole time. Barely anyone's talking about quality. So that's why I'm like, let's talk quality first and make sure you're doing just the right things. Because like for most cases, for the clients that I work with, they're like, yo, like this is what I'm doing. And they've got this scroll worth of stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. My job's deduction. Like we get better results by subtraction rather addition, right? So it's like, get rid of all of those things, dude. You just need to focus on these two things. And then I'm going to follow up with you every single day to make sure you're doing those two things. Do you know what I mean? And the day you fuck up and you do only one thing, I'm going to kick your ass to make sure you just do those things. Because you, if you start doing all this other stuff, it's pointless. Like, oh, you just need to do the few things that work. Like I cannot bash home any harder. It's not that hard. Fucking love that, man. I love that. I, I, I'm fucking lost for words, mate. I've got to be honest with you. Um, but it, it's, it's such an important, <laughs> it's such an important fact, though. So I'm really glad that we we we, we brought that on, um, because it's that's why that's why when we with me and Matt when we're on client calls, we integrate this the one thing, right? Yeah, exactly, the one thing. The best fucking book. The, Everyone should read that every quarter. Hands down. <laughs> what's the one thing that you can do to move the needle in your business forward? So when we hop on a call next week, you focus on that one thing instead of what's the five things you can do. So fucking brilliant. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Dude, mate, this has been um, fucking an, an incredible episode, mate. Um, but we have actually got one more question yeah. for you, man. And we, we actually asked this. I think we've asked this on pretty much every episode. And uh, the, the reason is that I think it's one of the most important aspects of having a personal brand. And that is having a common enemy, um, having something that you stand for, right? Or something that you stand against. And me and Perry, um, we are two people with two really fucked up stories. I mean, anybody that takes the time to just read a little bit about what we've been through, and like a lot of other people, story 
has been a case of us being able to break out of that story and rewrite a new one. So our real fucking, like, what we really don't like is people that stay stuck in their story, that, that, that don't just, they stay the victim. They don't decide like, okay, fuck this. I'm not a tree. I'm going to move. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to change the way I'm currently living. Like that is the one thing that we really do stand against is people that just stay in victim mode when there is so many opportunities in life to step out of that. So the question for you, mate, is what is the, what, what is the thing that you stand for? What's the thing that you stand against? The thing I stand against, mediocrity. That just comes to my head straight away. Just being mediocre. Why? Mm. Why, why be average? Why sit on your laurels? Why not put the effort in? Why not go that extra domain five yards? Why not go for your goals? Why stand back against yourself? Why not live the life that you can truly can? Because you're a little bit fearful. Like the sheer fact of it is, We've got one life. We have really no true evidence that we can really have an afterlife. So let's just say we've really only got one life that we know for sure. We better make the most out of it. And the other thing as well is like, dude, I could die 10 minutes after this interview finishes. Do you know what I mean? Like I could be very much dead and then that's it. That's all I've got left right now. And if I did, would I perish knowing that I've, left everything on the table or is there still some of the song stuck inside of me that I haven't let out? Mm. And so we've only got one crack at this thing. So why not make the most of it? Why not actually go and do something? And like, I understand, like I've been in the situations. You can be very scared before you make decisions. Um, we're about to make as a family, a really big life decision really soon. Like my wife's two weeks away and we're about to have our third daughter. We have to become a family of five. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Like, that's crazy. It's fucking unreal. I'm so excited. And the other thing as well is if you are being mediocre, then you're going to have regrets. And that scares the shit out of me. Mm, it's one of my mate. One of my, one of my deepest fears is uh, that old cliche fucking being on a bed one day, you know, on the deathbed, sitting there, taking the last few breaths and just having deep regret that I didn't do things, it just scares the fuck out of me, man. Like, I, I do think about it quite often. And it's, um, it's something that, that is one of the reasons why I do just try to take as many risks as possible and really try to push myself into really uncomfortable places. Like, I wrote a piece of content yesterday about it, about how even though right now life is good, life is actually really good, business is good, family's good, like, I'm in a good fucking place. And that's the problem. The problem is that I'm in a good place, not a great place. Yeah. The problem is that, and, and, and that was real. Some, it's really something over the last couple of months that I've been really self-aware of is it, on my own personal journey. And that is one of the reasons why me and Perry have actually decided to start something called the 60 day rewrite. Um, because we both reached this point. And it's just weird. It's like we share the same brain sometimes. It's <laughs> fucked do. up. You probably get that as well. <laughs> some of you, like some of the people you work with, right? Where you're just on the same wavelength. And um, we both reached this point where we were like, dude, like things are good, but they're not great. And that's a problem. That's like saying that we're, we're, we're like right now, there's more that could be done to elevate us and to take us to the next level, to take the people that we work with to the next level. So why aren't we doing that? So we've decided to, we actually vowed yesterday. This is day one of 60, man. We're fucking rewriting mm. the story for ourselves. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Like, look. I've heard a quote before saying hell on earth is meaning the person that you could have become. Yeah. And I think that's Ooh. true. Oh, that's good. That's, that's yeah. worth this. That's worth, that's been worth this whole hour. Just <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, um, so Chris, I'm, 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 I think the last question I have, which would be a quick one is moving forward. Right. Cause I, I followed you for a long time. Um, uh, very, very closely just cause I'm a big fan. And so I'm very interested to know what the future looks like for you um, and where the impact that you want to create and the road that you want to go down. I want to create a hundred million dollar business. I'm just going to say, I was like, you know, I know that I can do it business model wise. I know that we can create this. I had the team. I loved it. the team that I have. I love like, it's, it's hilarious. Um, I did a job posting not that long ago, looking for another team member. And a bunch of people got their panties in a 
Ty about how the word I use very specific wording like that I, I understand the power of words I understand the power of copywriting and I attracted the perfect person like he was the perfect fit and it was hilarious was his mother-in-law as a copywriter saw my post and got in contact with him and said you've got to go talk to these people like I, I know I've heard about these dudes and like it, it's just like you've got to go you know, perfect fit so it was hilarious um, so business wise, I'm excited for business. Like I really want to grow. There's a lot of different areas that we know in the back that's going to come. So like, um, there's a lot of growth there, which I'm really excited about family wise. We're about to become a family of five and I'm totally pumped up for that. Like I just, congratulations, I love, bro. Yeah, like, man, oh, big yeah, like I love, I love being a father and I'm so blessed because my children and my wife are absolutely amazing. Um, in a month's time, we're going to do another international move. We're not 100 percent sure where, but we're going to move somewhere else in the world and continue the journey. Um, come I to, come like, to cold England. <laughs> yeah, that won't happen. I don't do cold. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's like, "Where do you live?" And I go, "Summer." That's about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, moving uh, internationally with the family soon. That's fantastic. Um, my personal growth, like my actual own personal development dare I say spiritual development as well is something that's been a huge focus for me the past 18 months. Um, and I'm loving that. Like, as you just said, Matt, do you mean like, like I'm in a really good position, like life's good. Do you know what I mean? And not that long ago, I actually said this to one of my inner circle clients today. He said to me, he goes, dude, I kind of feel like I need a bit of a kick up the ass. Like I know I'm not doing what I really need to do. And I said to him, I go, it's because things have gotten good for you. Haven't they? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you're earning really good money. You're not working that much. I mean, you've got your business in a really good position. You've fallen in the kind of like the golden handcuff arena. You need to fucking get back up there. Do you know what I mean? And get back onto your mission. And so for me, life is really good. And I'm wanting to have the balance of enjoying it every single day. But at the same time, having that hunger, do you know what I mean? The smell of blood where I want to go out and still achieve. Shooting the documentary um, has been a love of mine. This is a project that I've just fallen in love with, like filmmaking and everything around this. I just can't get enough. The people I've been able to connect with and further connect with, like I've got to, in eight weeks, I'm flying back over to the US with the film crew to do another uh, shoot. And then we're doing another one in October. I'm going to be writing a book. So there's a bunch of stuff. F f life's good. Do you know what I mean? Amazing. But life's only good if you actually like set it out and go for it. So there's heaps of stuff that I'm excited about. But dude, I'm excited that I get to sit here and talk shit and hopefully someone actually enjoys it with you guys as well. So that's fun for me. 100% they will, man. And you know what? The good thing about stories is that they're constantly changing, right? Stories are constantly fucking changing. So, dude, we'd love to have you back on in three to six months' time because your story is going to be different than what it is today, yeah, man. Dude, so, I think yeah. that's great. And you know what? If your story doesn't change, you're doing something wrong. Fuck that's yeah. the thing for me. So, like, I think it's great, like, because it would be totally cool to come back on in a few months' time and be like, yo, you, you talked a big game last time, Chris. Where are you at? Do you know what, what I mean? Been? Like... Mm. And actually making sure that that's there. Like, I think that's awesome. I love that sort of accountability, accountability uh, when it comes to that stuff as well. Yeah. We'll pull you up. So, bro, did you get there? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the documentary at? What's the plan yeah, yeah, that, yeah. by the way? What's the, what's the plans with the documentary? What's um, the mission behind it? Like, where, where, are we going to see it? Is it going to be online? It definitely will be. Um, yeah. it's, it's called A Life Worth Living. So, if you go to a alifeworthliving.film, you'll be able to see... Okay. the details about that stuff. Um, it'll come out most likely the start of next year. Amazing, cool. man. Cool. Amazing. Well, Chris, thank you so much again, once again, mate, mm -hmm. for joining us today. Um, yeah, we're very, we're very conscious of your time. And um, look, our mission is to provide fitness professionals that are trying to build and scale their business with valuable insights into how others have done it, just like Chris. And he shared his fit story today. So if this was a relatable episode, if you found there was value in this and it benefited you in some way, please don't just keep scrolling. Hit the subscribe button below. Uh, we'd really appreciate the love. So Chris, thank you so much, mate. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, big thank time. Thank you, boys. I really appreciate you having me, Matt and Perry. You guys rock. Keep doing what you're doing. Rocking, dude. Catch you soon, buddy. Cheers, mate. Ciao.